Hello, my name is Tony and I have the opportunity to be the lead pastor at Brookhaven Wesleyan in Marion, Indiana. There's a lot of different things that I get to do as lead pastor, but one thing that they've never asked me to do is to lead music. And that's for good reason. The truth is I am probably the least musical person you will ever meet. I cannot play a single instrument. I cannot sing. Uh, honestly, I cannot even clap on beat. Um, I can play my Spotify and Apple playlists pretty well, but musically that is basically all I can do. Sometimes when I am backstage on a Sunday morning, I hear the worship team talking about musical harmony. And honestly, I have no idea what they're talking about. I realize that it's probably a good thing, but if I was to actually have to describe what musical harmony is, I would not have a clue how to do that. I would imagine that it sounds great though, and uh, it's something that is important for music. I may not know anything about music and harmony, but what I do know is that God calls us as his people to be people who make harmony and peace a high priority within their lives. As we read the New Testament scriptures over and over again, what we see is the New Testament writers writing about the importance of harmony within the life of the community. It's a theme that is repeated over and over again within the scriptures. Today, I wanna read a couple of passages of scriptures from the book of Romans as the apostle Paul writes to the church in Rome. One is found in Romans chapter 12, beginning at verse nine. Don't just pretend to love others, really love them. Hate what is wrong, hold tightly to what is good. Love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. Never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. Rejoice in our confident hope. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. When God's people are in need, be ready to help them. Always eager to practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Don't curse them. Pray that God will bless them. Be happy with those who are happy and weep with those who weep. Listen to what he says in verse 16. Live in harmony with each other. Don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people. And don't think you know it all. Never pay back evil with more evil. Do things in such a way that everyone can see you are honorable. Do all that you can to live at peace with everyone. And then again in Romans chapter 15, Paul says, may God who gives this patience and encouragement help you live in complete harmony with each other as is fitting for the followers of Christ Jesus. Then all of you can join together with one voice, giving praise and glory to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul is clear that as followers of Jesus, we are called to be people that make harmony and peace a priority within our lives. The question I ask is, why is harmony and peace so important for those of us who are followers of Jesus? There's probably lots of potential reasons, but let me share just a couple with you uh, today. When we live in harmony with each other and live in unity with each other, we do a better job of pointing people to Jesus. In Romans 15, Paul says, then all can join together with one voice, giving praise and glory to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. When we demonstrate unity, we are demonstrating to the world the power of God's transforming work in our lives. Francis Chan, in his book on unity, says this, Scripture teaches that our influence on the world is directly tied to the unity we display. We need to stop thinking that our primary duty to our fellow believers is to critique them. It's not. Our primary duty is to love them. It's hard for people who look at followers of Jesus to understand why followers of Jesus are so divided. We live in a culture that is full of division and disunity at every junction of our life. If we as followers of Jesus demonstrate a life of unity and harmony, 
we get to demonstrate to the world the power of Christ at work in our lives. The question that I would love for you to ponder today is, does the peace and harmony that we demonstrate point others to the transforming work of Jesus Christ in our lives? Also, as we live in harmony and peace with each other, we work together to fulfill the mission that God has called us to. Jesus prays for his followers in John chapter 17. And in this prayer, he prays that they will be unified. He prays that through their unity, the world will know that he has been sent by God. As followers of Jesus, we have a very important task of delivering the hope and the freedom that is found in the transforming power of Jesus Christ. If there is disharmony and division within our lives, then our ability to fulfill that mission is severely diminished. One of the key ingredients of harmony is uh, choosing and using the gifts that God has given us to fulfill the mission that he has called us to. In the scripture that was read in Romans 12, uh, Earlier in that passage of scripture, Paul talks about these spiritual gifts that we have been given and how they are to be used for fulfilling the mission that God has called us to. We have been given gifts and part of what it means to live in harmony with each other is to use our gifts that God has given us to fulfill the mission that God has called us to. Imagine a football team whose purpose is to win championships. Imagine if they spent all of their time arguing about who was going to be the quarterback or what jerseys they were going to wear or what song they were going to enter the field to. The likelihood of them winning a championship would be very, very slim. But they have a mission. They have a purpose of winning. And we have a purpose and a mission of reaching people who do not yet know Jesus Christ as their personal savior with the good news, with the hope and the freedom that is found in the transforming power of Jesus Christ. The question I would love for us to ponder today is, does the unity that we display help the mission of reaching people with the message of Jesus Christ become more of a reality within our community? That is my prayer for you today that we will be united behind the mission of sharing the good news of Jesus Christ with our community and with our world. Let's pray. God, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for the opportunity to be part of a community of people who are united, who live in harmony with each other, who are desiring to reach more and more people with the hope and the freedom that is found in the transforming power of Jesus Christ. God, we pray that today, that we will seek to live our lives in a way that point people to you, that we will work together in community with a spirit of unity, with a spirit of harmony that will bring glory to you. May the mission of Jesus Christ be accomplished in our community because we are people who are willing to work hard to promote unity and harmony within our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.